Imagine living your life after 50 and feeling energized and excited about your future. Welcome to the Women in the Middle podcast, the podcast for women who are ready to figure out what they want and create the life they deserve. Here's your host and master certified life coach, Susie Rosenstein. Hey there, today we're talking about how to make a happiness and gratitude jar in midlife and why it's a great idea. Let's go. Welcome back to the podcast, Women in the Middle, with over a million downloads and counting. I'm your host, Susie Rosenstein, your master certified coach, a midlife mentor, and I am so glad to be here with you again. So we're in the middle of a happiness and gratitude challenge in my academy this month. Specifically, we're making happiness and gratitude jars over the course of the month. And I wanted to share this simple little idea with you because the whole experience has been way more fun and way more meaningful than anticipated. But just quick, before we go deeper into all of this, I want to invite you to have a breakthrough. Now, I know when you're stuck in a midlife funk, feeling confused and unclear about what's next, it can be hard to even imagine what might be on the other side of your breakthrough to getting clear about what you want. So I want to offer an easy way to start moving in that direction. You can give yourself the jumpstart you need in the form of a breakthrough coaching call. It's a two-hour private coaching call that's basically a deep dive into what's getting in the way of your clarity. We can coach on anything you need to make a breakthrough because, my friend, I have a feeling you're tired of wasting valuable time. Head over to my website at www.susierosenstein.com and click on the Coaching and Workshops tab, and you will see the booking link there. I only ever have a few spots open, so if this is something you want, jump on this opportunity and one of them can be yours. Now, let me tell you more about the way the challenge worked in my Women in the Middle Academy. And of course, you can do it for yourself too. You can do it too. The idea for a happiness and gratitude jar is to purposefully create and gather happiness and gratitude reminders and put them in a dedicated place like a jar so that you can access these emotions at any given time like easy peasy, like go do something easy and boom, you're on your way. (laughs) Something like that. So if you look on Pinterest, you'll see tons of ideas for this whole project. You usually see a happiness jar or a gratitude jar separately, but I thought, what the heck? And I wanted to combine them for the purposes of this challenge. And I think it was a good idea. Now, you might also be thinking, Susie, This sounds like an elementary school project. I'm not in grade three. (laughs) So Susie, what the heck? And you know what? That's okay. It's kind of elementary, actually, in its simplicity. But the thing is that gratitude is a remarkably interesting and powerful emotion and such an amazing practice for more happiness in your life. Who doesn't want more happiness? This simple act is something because, remember, your thoughts create your feelings. That is the core reason that this works so well and can be a really good idea. Happiness and gratitude jars like this can help you appreciate and perhaps even see more positive things in your life. There's also a bit of research, a fair bit of research, that supports gratitude actually affecting your physical and emotional health. Gratitude and happiness can also help you experience life better, perhaps more in the present moment, perhaps celebrating more in general. So as you know, I don't need to tell you this, but I will remind you that I know too, (laughs) midlife is full of ups and downs. It's often not for the faint of heart. There are curveballs on the regular. So being more intentional about creating happiness and gratitude can actually help you. And you can even be grateful for the extra boost when things get more difficult, right? That you'll have a jar, you know, you have something specific that you can do to really help you. So here are the simple steps that we're going to use to create a happiness and gratitude jar in midlife. You can do this too. You can do it alone for yourself. You can do it with your family. I want you to have fun with it. Step number one is to find a jar or some kind of a container to hold the gratitude and happiness reminders. So the first week we prepped and decorated the jars. I would like to suggest that you can interpret the word decorate however you want. Now, I know sometimes you might be listening and you're like, oh, you're creative and I'm not creative. So if that kind of thing is going on with you right now, just relax. You can have fun with the decorating if it's up your alley, or you can just skip it, skip the decorating. You could just stick a label on there if you want. I pulled out my label maker. I hadn't used it in years. I even had to order new tape. Like I had to go on Amazon and search it out. (laughs) I got inspired to use my label maker. 
Um, the other thing is that you can just put a ribbon around it. If that's what you want, you could just use the label or you can pick a special container. Uh, it might be special to you, maybe having special meaning. It might even be a teapot or another beautiful um, vase or something that you're not using. And you can use it for this purpose without extra decorating. It really doesn't matter. The idea is to find a container to put stuff in to help you access gratitude at any given time. You're looking for a receptacle of some sort. <laughs> so it's okay if it's just a jar and it's okay if it's something else. So I used a soup jar, like a mason jar. I went to the dollar store and I bought some pretty butterfly stickers and that was it. Oh, plus a ribbon that I had kicking around. You could do whatever you want. Some people um, in the group really decorated and some people didn't. It's all good. Now, the next few steps are just prompts to help you think about different parts of your life and ideas for happiness and gratitude, because that's what we're going to do next. We're going to load up our little container with these sorts of sentiments. I guess you could call it gratitude and happiness sourcing. You can be as creative as you want and, of course, do what works for you. But it's how to get going with this fun little challenge or project. The idea is that you print these out or write them up and then add them individually to your jar. So on that note, step two is to collect happiness and gratitude quotes. So we started with quotes. I thought it was a nice and easy way to kick things off. The action here is to head to Google or Pinterest, your favorite books, anything like that, and collect seven quotes or one per day for a week, right? However you want to go about this all about happiness and gratitude. So copy them to a document and then cut them up individually or write them out individually and then roll them up or fold them up and add them to your jar. I even saw someone's Pinterest post who rolled each of these up and added a little ribbon, <laughs> like a little, uh, like a tube, like a little tube. So you can do whatever you want. She did it for every single one that she added. I just folded mine up and popped them in. You can also use different color different color paper, whatever you want it to look like. I just went with computer printing paper. I kept it simple. I wanted to reduce all possible obstacles to getting this little project done. <laughs> Here are the quotes that I added to my happiness and gratitude jar. The first one, happiness is when what you think, what you say, and what you do are in harmony by Mahatma Gandhi. Next, it's not how much we have, but how much we enjoy that makes happiness by Charles Spurgeon. Then be grateful for what you have and stop complaining. It bores everybody else, does you no good and doesn't solve any problems by Zig Ziglar. Then this one, feeling gratitude and not expressing it is like wrapping a present and not giving it by William Arthur Ward. Then this, joy is the simplest form of gratitude by Karl Barth. And finally, this, give yourself a gift of five minutes of contemplation and awe of everything you see around you. Go outside and turn your attention to the many miracles around you. This five minutes a day regimen of appreciation and gratitude will help you focus your life in awe by Wayne Dwyer. Okay, now step three, mine your brain for memories. The goal of this third week is to add memories that conjure up and create happiness and gratitude. This was a really fun exercise in our group because when we each shared them, we all loved thinking about everybody else's memories, and it also helped us remember more memories ourselves. Like, it was really fun. They were all kinds of stories that hadn't come up before in our group, so it was, it was just fun on so many levels. So here are a few memories of mine. I'm grateful for my best friend from high school. Some of my happiest times have been with her. Having a friend for over 43 years is really something. We have so much history together. She's silly. I love silly. I just love silly. One memory that always makes me laugh was, was in high school. One night we went to a movie. She had a car and she drove us to see Monty Python's Meaning of Life. <laughs> we laughed so hard. And then when we went to the car afterwards, like we went to the parking lot, she must have turned the wheel funny because it got stuck on the cement parking barrier thingy and somehow we got stuck on top of it. <laughs> I don't know exactly what happened. We were having a massive crack up and we had a lot of trouble figuring out what to do. Remember, we're like 16, 17. Anyway, it's a guaranteed laugh every time I think about it. So that is a memory that got put into my jar. Another one is about my dog, Nico the Noof. He totally makes me happy. He is hilarious and so darn cute that we can barely stand it sometimes. I know I've talked to you about him before. 
We are so grateful for him. I'm also so proud of myself for recognizing what I really wanted when I turned 50. So just like my childhood with St. Bernard's, I wanted to share the big dog experience with my family. I couldn't stop thinking about it. And I'm so grateful I followed my heart. One memory that makes me laugh so hard is when we went to pick him up at 12 weeks old. Even though I grew up with large dogs, I was shocked to see a 41-pound puppy. (laughs) He was 41 pounds at 12 weeks. His weight has been a fun topic of conversation ever since. People pull over from the side of the road and they always ask, what is he? How much does he weigh? What does he eat? And does he slobber a lot? (laughs) That happens all the time. But he, it, I'm just so proud of myself that I really connected with what I wanted uh, 10 years ago. And it makes me smile. And I'm just so happy when I think about him. Okay, here's a memory about air conditioning. I am so grateful for air conditioning. I love it so much. One funny memory was during a heat wave when I was nine months pregnant with my firstborn. And my air conditioner broke. I thought I was going to die. <laughs> I panicked. I was so pregnant. I was swollen everywhere. And it was so, so hot. I threatened to go to a hotel if we couldn't get it fixed immediately. And we did get it fixed and everything was okay. But that was that was dicey. And here is a musical memory. Mel Torme and Frank Sinatra's music. It makes me so happy. It puts a smile on my face immediately. So does a lot of big band music. I could listen to these two songs over and over again. The first one is You Make Me Feel So Young a Frank Sinatra um, production of that. I just love it. And the other one, a Mel Torme one, is Wave, Catch the Wave. It's a guaranteed happy place for me. Anytime I put this music on, I get transported to a good emotional space. So it's huge happiness there. And I am very grateful that I found these two um, special recording artists early in my life. I have huge collection of their music. And like I said, it makes me really happy. Here's another one. Whales make me happy. I don't know why. From my first whale watch in 1985 in Kennebunkport, Maine, I was captivated and I've prioritized and treasured the time I've had on the ocean, connecting with these beautiful animals now for about 40 years. It's one of the most joyous experiences I've had. The most intense and happy memory was an eye-to-eye encounter in 1992 And I have talked about this before on the podcast. I'll put a link to where I explained that. This whale blinked. She blinked at me and she was only about a foot away, like my head leaning over a tiny boat, the side of a tiny boat, and her coming to the surface of the water, looking at me. She blinked. We were like very close together, maybe 12 to 12 to 18 inches apart. I will never, ever forget it. So that memory went into my jar. And here's another one about traveling. Traveling makes me happy. I like being in nature more than cities. So as soon as I could travel on my own, I made it a priority, even when I was a broke student, even if it meant going to Connecticut and Rhode Island from the Philadelphia area or from the Toronto area to visit family. I consider myself a New England East Coast kind of girl, even though I didn't grow up in technically a New England state, but my family is all from there and I've spent a lot of time there and I just love the idea of visiting people and places. Another thing I have happiness and gratitude for, we enjoyed camping as a family, traveling to provincial parks. We all love adventure travel in my family, and we've enjoyed that over the years. I am so grateful to have prioritized these experiences and that we've been able to do them. One funny memory was from our very first camping trip in a tent trailer with the kids who were like three and a half, five and six years old. It was a lot to camp with little kids that age. So if you've done that, like it's it's hard. <laughs> it's really fun and it's really hard. When we were getting them ready to go to bed, I noticed their feet as they were climbing into their bed at the other end of the trailer. Oh my God, their feet were so dirty. Like they were covered in dirt and they were getting into bed. <laughs> and it was just so shocking. And hilarious at the same time. Like I really thought that we would be clean when we were camping. And even when they had showers, they weren't clean because when you are at a campsite, it's dirty. (laughs) So I'm so grateful that we prioritized camping trips when the kids were small, but I'll never forget the vision I had looking down the camper to their end with those dirty feet climbing into the bed, getting onto the sheets. Oh my God, it was something. It was shocking. 
So that's another memory that went in. There's lots of travel memories, but I just tried to boil it down to to things that just really popped out in my mind right away. And 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 these are two things that did. So after our little challenge, I can absolutely add more and you can add more than seven. You can add as many as you want. And one more that I added, this isn't one particular memory, but it's it's a memory of this time every year and it's springtime. Springtime makes me so happy. I am on bud patrol. I'm looking for the little buds on the trees. I'm looking for um, bulbs to start popping up. I'm always envious of my friends in the States who start to post the first um, the first flowers that are popping up. Uh, if they're a little more south than I live, then they start coming up maybe a month, four to six weeks ahead of mine. So they've always got things popping up a few weeks ahead of me. I just find this time of year getting getting really excited for the spring and gardening and new life and planting and starting little baby seeds and just all of it. I just love that time of year and it's a solid, solid memory. Uh, And I'm very grateful that I enjoy gardening and it brings me a lot of happiness. So those are the examples of some of the memories that I decided to put into my jar. It was really fun to think about it. And it's the type of thing I find that when you start thinking about it, you think of more. And like I said, you can add more. Who cares? It's your little jar. So step number four is to focus on accomplishments you're happy about, proud of, or feel grateful for. So I was thinking about that too. And I wanted to share three of the accomplishments that came up for me. Uh, And here they are. So one is I'm grateful for learning how to play saxophone. I learned when I was 10. Being musical and playing in marching bands, jazz bands, and concert bands over the years has brought me so much happiness. And this has been going on for 50 years. I've met wonderful people, and I had so much fun, and I continue to have fun. I'm actually, I haven't played for the last couple of years, but I will play again, and I know I will play again. I just couldn't handle one more thing at night. (laughs) A lot of these community bands are at night, Uh, but I'll be back. Here's another accomplishment. I'm proud that I started this podcast. I was 54 years old, six years ago, when I launched the Women in the Middle show. I was so nervous and uncomfortable doing something this tech heavy and putting myself out there like you have to on a podcast. Now, I'm so grateful for the decision I made back then. Not only have I gotten tons of feedback about how useful the podcast is, to help midlife women see what's really possible. Like when I get these emails, it just lights me up. My my heart is just so full. Uh, women listeners have told me that they feel more positive about life, that they've been able to make changes in this uh, stage of life. And I've even invited listeners to share their stories of how the podcast impacts them. When you really think about it, it's the podcast universe you feel close. Like when you're listening right now, we feel connected. And I love talking to listeners and I love hearing about where you are when we're together. Are you walking the dog? Are you cutting up the vegetables? Are you in the bathroom putting on your makeup? Are you driving? Like what are all the things we're doing? I've had people tell me where they're walking. They're in all different parts of the world. It's so great. So I love hearing from listeners and that's awesome, but I've also enjoyed making the podcast more than I could have imagined. I love meeting the guests. I love going back into my brain and figuring out what uh, examples to share and how to tell a story that supports whatever message um, I'm talking about. So I find that the podcast is a win-win. It's happiness. It's gratitude. I'm really proud that I leaned into it back then. Another one is that I'm grateful for my accomplishment of completing a master's degree in applied social psychology in my 20s. It seemed so daunting when I applied. I wanted it so much and I learned so much and I can see how that part of my education was quite significant in my future accomplishments and career direction, even becoming a life coach. So that's the gist of it. Those four steps are are really all you need to get going. So the first one is to find a jar. The second one is to collect happiness and gratitude quotes. The third one is to mine your brain for memories that help you conjure up and create happiness and gratitude. And the fourth one is to focus on your accomplishments that you're happy about, proud of, or feel grateful for. 
Like I said, way more things you can add. You can be inspired for happiness and gratitude by all kinds of prompts. The point is to dig deep and front end load your jar with sentiments and ideas that help you feel happy and grateful. So the sky really is the limit. You can focus on people you're grateful for, who's funny in your life, what's funny in your life, favorite vacation spots, favorite vacation memories, things you love to do at home, finding your favorite underwear and knowing where to shop. (laughs) That's always a popular one with us midlife gals. It could be your favorite scarf or your favorite scents, maybe perfume or homemade cookies or a fire pit on a summer's night. It could be movies you love to watch again and again, or a series that you absolutely love, love, love. Like, I love Curb Your Enthusiasm. I'm so grateful that there's another season coming up soon to watch. It could be food you really enjoy. It could be your experiences with animals and pets. It could be people you've read about who've made a huge difference in your life. You don't even know them. Maybe you re- they're an author that you love to read, or a documentary that you watched, or somebody in an organization that you care about. It could be mentors you've been fortunate to have in your life. It could be a unique gift or talent of yours. And the list goes on. The important thing is to remind yourself to be grateful and create more happiness in your life on purpose. This is all possible to some degree, even with the obstacles to happiness and gratitude everywhere. Not allowing yourself to be happy is one of those things that many people regret. There's no downside to being happy and grateful. A happiness and gratitude jar is a great place to start. It's a baby step and it's a good one. Okay, that's it for this episode. As you know, this podcast is all about how to love your life again after 50. It's really all about coaching you to be more intentional and to incorporate mindfulness into your life as a regular practice. This is how you put yourself on your agenda. My focus as your midlife coach is to help you get unstuck, clear, and focused on your current values and priorities so you don't have regrets. I can help you create the success you're looking for, and that's why I created the Women in the Middle Academy with you in mind, because it's a warm, supportive, and fun coaching community of like-minded women who grow forward together so you feel great about your roadmap to a more fun, meaningful, and regret-free next chapter. So email me your questions and let's talk about it and see if it's for you. Go ahead and book your free no obligation momentum call at www.womeninthemiddleacademy.com. If you want to have a book club experience, but with the podcast instead, join the Women in the Middle Podcast Club by heading over to susierosenstein.com and click on the podcast club button. Finally, for show notes and links, head over to www.susierosenstein.com and click the podcast tab and look for episode 331. That's episode 331. Thanks so much for listening. It's time for you to put yourself first one thought at a time. I'm Susie Rosenstein, and I'll talk to you next week. Mm